data classes are a bit of an odd one. Uh, some people watching this video will see what I'm about to do and think, I've seen something like that before. Isn't that something you could do in Atres? Because there is a, a, a Python package index module called Atres, uh, which does a lot of the same things. It's actually a little more powerful in some respects. Now, the data classes are an inbuilt part of Python. I personally prefer them. Other people personally don't. So it really is your call, um, you know, which you use. I just find Atres really clunky for some reason, and data classes I just find really nice. There is actually an optimized data class that I was going to do in a future video. I was going to do a video about a while ago and completely forgot. But that's a future video. For now, we're just going to talk about the one that's inbuilt in Python. So we're going to do, uh, I'm just going to call it dt.py, I'm getting lazy now. And we're going to do from uh, data classes, import data class, and then we're also going to import field. And I'll talk about field in a second. So a data class is a class wrapper. Uh, so for those of you that don't know, decorators can you know, wrap classes as well as uh, functions or methods. So we can now do, say if you wanted a profile, you now do, do name as a string, age as an int, uh, gender as a string, and jobs as a list of strings. So essentially what we're doing here is we are telling the data class that we want name, age, gender, and jobs to be, you know, instance attributes. And we're saying that they should be of type string, int, string, and list of string, respectively. And you do actually have to do this, otherwise Python syntax will complain. Uh, type hinting allows you to do this. If you don't do type hinting, it won't let you do it. Uh, unless you use a field, but then I think my pile will complain at you if you don't, but... It's it's whatever. And with this, you have now created a class. You have created a class with an init and a wrapper. So if we just uh, set a profile to be a profile of you know my name, my age, uh, my gender, and my jobs, which is nothing. I'm I'm unemployed. Roll XD. And then we could do print string pro. Well, actually, well, you know what we'll do. We'll do uh, a profile. And then the actual wrapper. And then if we print, if we run that, we can see that our profile has a name of Ethan, age of 23, gender male, and jobs, nothing. We've done all that in this. So we've created our init, we've created our wrapper. If you just print it as a string here, it does exactly the same thing. And it's it's such a time saver for these sort of things, but that's not all it can do because it can have keyword arguments as well. So if you were to set, say, a keyword argument for gender to user specified, uh, this is what uh, Google refers to as it's non-binary, I'm pretty sure. So we'll just use that as a default, because, you know, why not? And our jobs, we could set as an empty list like that. However, there is a problem with that, and this is one of the weird quirks in Python. That this essentially is stored in memory, and then every time you use a class, it will use the same list. So if you ever append to the, so if you create a profile and then you create, say, a profile two, and you append to the list in profile one, you'll also append to the list in profile two. It's a weird quirk in Python. It's very bizarre. It's why you don't have mutable keyword argument defaults because they're resolved at essentially boot time, not when it's called. Very weird, very strange. One way around it in data classes is to use the field and then set a default factory to list. So those of you that watch the collections video with the default dicks will kind of recognize what's going on here. So essentially when a profile is initialized, uh, if nothing is provided, it will use this method here to determine the default value. And yes, you can have any functional method there and it will work just fine. In this case, a list creates an empty list. So now it creates a separate empty list for each profile. So we can get rid of these two now. And we can see our gender is user specified and our jobs are still none because we're still very much unemployed, um, which is grand. So we have our keyword arguments and we have our non-keyword arguments. So at this stage, I wanna show you what this code is equivalent to. And it is, if I copy it from here, at least 
it's functionally equivalent to this. Oh my god, that did not help at all. Uh, can I can I move that out? There we go. That sort of works. So it's not it's not syntactically equivalent to it. You know, this jobs is handled slightly differently. It, it can accept a none, and then you do jobs on none. This handles the you know the mutability problem. Um, but you know, instead of creating this whole init with all of this stuff here and, and sending everything here and then creating this repo like manually doing absolutely everything, the data class does all that for you. There are plenty of other things that this can do. So if I get rid of this for a second, just so we can you know, clear up the namespace a bit. I'm not going to show you absolutely everything because we'll be here for a while, but I do want to show you, the, you know, at least make you aware of the most useful things. So if you want, you can also import, you know, keyword only. And if we were to say have this like this, so you, you have this underscore and then you type hint it as keyword only, what it tells the, uh, the data class is that gender and jobs should, uh, you know, are keyword only arguments. So it still works like this, but if we were to do, say something like this, it will say that it, it you know, it takes uh, three position arguments before we're given, we have to provide it like this, otherwise it won't work. Uh, some other cool things you can do uh, reside in here. So from Python 3.10 onwards, you can set slots equals true, and it will automatically generate slots for you. Now, I'll talk about slots in a separate video as well. That would actually be a good one to do, thinking about it. But for those of you that know what slots are, you can do that. You can also set frozen equals true. So once the profile is created, you cannot change anything about it. It's sort of similar to the name tuple in that respect. And then one slightly weird one you can have is uh, init equals false, which disables init creation, um, which is useful if you want to, you know, have your own custom init and you just want to have, you know, an automatically generated repo. That really is what data classes are for, for automatically generating uh, representation string, you know, dunders. Um, but if you want to have your own custom init, then you can turn the init off. I believe you can, oh, don't quote me on this. I believe you can in the field turn init, yeah, you can turn it to false. So now jobs isn't set in the init and you know, it, it does it somewhere else. I'm not entirely sure. I've never you know found a use case for that. I'm not really sure where you would do that. But, you know, it's an option if you want it. Yeah, I think I've covered enough of the basics of data classes. You know, there's a lot to this. It's worth looking up. It's also potentially worth looking into Atras as well, if you like the idea of this. Atras is the same thing, just a bit more powerful, and it also supports Python 3.6. I personally don't like it as much because I just feel like it's really clunky. I've never gotten along with it any time I've tried to use it, but you might have more luck than I do. So if you do, let me know. But yeah, if you like the video, then leave a like to let me know, and comment below if you have any questions or feedback. If you really like the video, then consider subscribing. And if you really, really like the video, then consider becoming a Patreon using the link below or becoming a member using the join button below. Uh, one pound a month on either platform will get your name on the screen like these people. And I will see you in the next video where hopefully the perfect Python will be back. That'll probably be tomorrow, actually. Yeah, I just didn't have time to do all the intros and everything because everything's been a bit hectic with assignments and I'm home this week and everything. So hopefully from next week, everything will go you know, a little bit back to normal. So I'll see you for that.